What is up gamers, Fcast and Chill here. So Adicon has a video where he does a sub 10 million budget solo CM and he made it in the challenge time which is an hour and 10 minutes which is super impressive. But I'm gonna try to go a little bit further and I wanted to go a bit more extreme and try to do a solo deathless CM with only 1 million in GP. And it, it I'm not gonna be able to make the challenge time, I'll go ahead and tell you that. But the goal is to just get through the raid deathless and see how that goes. So it's a pretty big challenge to cut the budget down that much more. It, if you've watched Adicon's video, you know, he uses a few things like the tent whip and the blowpipe. And those, you know, are worth, you know, in the one to two mil range, maybe even a little bit more at the time. So that's not going to fly. And we're going to have to find a way to deal with some of these bosses with only a one mil budget. I also want to mention that this video was made or the footage was recorded before the Cox changes were made. So, you know, it, it was made a little bit easier recently and this was done pre-update. So there's a couple bosses that are going to be the roadblocks here and that's because they have the ability to heal themselves. The first of those is going to be Tecton. So Tecton returns to the anvil after a little bit each fight and when he's back there he's replenishing his defense that you've lowered and he's also healing up. So that's going to be an issue. We're going to have to have some weapon that can out DPS him and kill him before uh, he keeps healing up. The other problem is going to be Vasa. So Vasa will heal up whenever he goes back to the crystals and honestly has pretty high defense too. So finding a way to kill Vasa with an under 1 mil budget is going to be a bit of a challenge. But I've done some theory crafting and I think that I have a way to get a weapon that will help with both of these bosses and will definitely keep us under that 1 mil budget. And the key to doing that is I need to go farm some Seratinus because I'm actually doing this on my Iron Man, so I have to go get the items that I want to use. And the item that I have in mind to help out and make this sub 1 mil kill count possible is going to be the Seratinus Cudgel. Now this item is really strong for how much it's worth. At the time of recording this, I think it was about 130k on the GE, and it's really, really powerful. Um, the, its crush bonus is just so strong. And the thing is, a lot of enemies within CMs, especially Tecton, uh, crush works great on them. So we are going to be using the cudgel. That's going to be kind of our best in slot melee weapon for the entire raid. And you can see here, I did get the cudgel after a short grind here. So we are gonna go and try to send this out. So this is going to be my setup. As you can see here, I have my Seracnus cudgel and then a few things like, you know, Barrow's Glove, Helm of Neat's Knot, Strength Amulet. Um, I also have some stuff like the mythic, uh, Mythical Cape, you know, Dragon Defender, and yeah, just some Dragon Hide Pants. I am bringing some Ruby Bolts, and for calculating how much GP I use for the kill count, I'm going to subtract off the actual amount of bolts that I use, so we'll see how that goes. Then for my ranged gear, you can see that I'm just using Black Dehyde and Amulet of Glory, and then I also have my rune crossbow. I'm bringing in the uh, poison dragon dagger for a spec weapon. I have my rune pickaxe for the guardians as well. And then for maging, I'm essentially just bringing full mystics and a trident of the seas, along with the book of the dead, because thralls are going to be extremely helpful. So we are going to keep track of how many runes we use as well and use that in calculating the total budget. I'm also bringing five stamina potions, and that's because there is a way to cheese Ulm without taking damage on the melee hand if you bring enough staminas, and I feel like that's going to be pretty important for this awful gear that I have to do Ulm Deathless. Because remember, this is a challenge mode raid that we're doing here. So I think that we're pretty much good to go in. I'm going to go ahead and send this kill count, and we're going to see how this goes. So the first boss here is going to be Tecton, and as we enter here, we can see that I actually don't have a weapon that lowers defense. So I'm just going to sip a super combat and summon a thrall. And then we are just going to walk around with the cudgel and just keep smacking him and hope that this doesn't take too long. 
And so the way that I can do Tecton, I actually have it so that I don't use any run energy. Um, I walk enough to where I am replenishing run energy throughout the fight, so I can honestly go forever this way. And that was actually a really good start before the first anvil. Hopefully we can keep getting hits that are that good and this won't take too long. All right, and here we are at about 540. Tecton finally goes down, and now we are able to move on to the next room. Uh, fortunately, you know, I was able to do that without sipping any stamina potions or taking any damage, thanks to all the walking that I was doing. So pretty nice to get through that. And now we're just gonna rush through the crab's room, um, which, you know, honestly isn't really changed by having bad gear. As we're waiting for Ice Demon to spawn here, we are going to go back and pull out all this gear and then start fighting the Scavenger Beast. And I don't really know how many supplies I'm going to have to prep, but I'm just going to say that that's enough. That's a lot of Stinkhorn Mushrooms and Endarken Juice. And so now we're going to be taking on the Ice Demon. So Ice Demon, I probably should have brought an Arc Light to do this, but I'm just going to use my Cudgel here. Um, Cudgel is probably my best bet here, and you can just walk in this diamond-shaped pattern here. And again, this would also work with arc light and be a lot more effective, but it saves an inventory slot to just use the cudgel here again. And hopefully this won't take too long. And after about three minutes of running in that little diamond shape there, Ice Demon is finally down and we are good to go. So now we're going to get some gear out. Just got to get that glory for my range setup, and we're going to be taking on the shamans. So I do have an anti-poison here, so he should be good. Uh, the shamans, it's just all about moving and making sure you don't really get hit uh, because these guys can actually hit pretty hard. And my ruby bolt just procced on the first hit, which is kind of funny. But um, yeah, hopefully that won't happen too much because I don't want to just drain my HP. But we could just take uh, kite the shaman back this way, summon a thrall, and we are just going to safe spot him from over here. And that is the shaman room done, and now we're going to spend a lot of time prepping some supplies because, you know, our gear is total garbage and we're going to need a lot of supplies to get through the rest of the rooms. And now we're moving on to the vanguard's room. Honestly, vanguards shouldn't be too bad. Um, really, I just need to make sure I stay on top of my potions here. And I accidentally did turn on augury here, which is technically against the rules because I'm trying to do it without... Um, you know, without using the those expensive prayers, so under one mil budget. I do realize that after a few hits and then I stopped using it, but since I'm safe spotting this um, melee vanguard, we'll, we'll just say that I didn't use augury. Um, but yeah, I, I think it takes me a minute. But anyway, we're gonna safe spot this guy and get him down a little bit. And then the others, we're essentially just gonna chug brews to try to keep our health up while we're fighting them. So we're gonna equip all of our um, melee gear and smack this guy. And you may, might be wondering why I brought a mythical cape instead of a fire cape. And honestly, I, th I thought the fire cape or inferno cape, those are, you know, not necessarily budget. Or I, I mean, they are cheap or easy to get, but, um, you know, some people don't have them. So I figured might as well just go with the mythical cape since it's a little funnier. Um, and it does have some crush bonus. But yeah, now we're going back to maging this guy. And, we're, you know, we're just going to go through the vanguards like this, just very nice and slow, using our thrall as much as we can, and hopefully it won't be too bad. Here's where I realized that I should just be using Mystic Mike instead of Augury, and so from here on out, then I don't use uh, Augury or Rigor at all the rest of the raid, and I, I hadn't used Rigor either, so I'm, I'm going to call it good and just say I didn't use the extra prayers, but... Um, yeah, still Vanguard's going okay, just taking it nice and slow.
And finally, after six and a half minutes, those vanguards are dead and we're able to move on. And that is the entire thieving room without dying. Very high level gameplay here. So we're moving on to Vespula now, and Vespula is going to be a bit challenging because I have some pretty shitty ranged gear and we're going to try to, you know, kill Vespula before any of the grubs pop open. Because if the grubs pop from Vespula, then, you know, the portal is going to get healed up and these Vespian soldiers are going to come out. It's just going to be a total mess. So we can deal with that by actually picking some of the plants and using those on the grubs to heal them up. So we'll start off the Vespula fight as normal, just running back and forth, shooting the portal, or trying to shoot it and, you know, not getting very many good hits. Those ruby bolts really help out a lot. But now I'm going to run back here and just spend some time picking fruit and using those to heal up the grubs. So as long as I continue to do that, I should be okay, and I um, should be able to keep this fight going. And I brought a ton of potions here to restore my prayer so that I can keep this up as long as possible. And so, you know, just healing up the grubs like this and then going back to shooting the portal. And just using the redemption method as always. And finally, after another six and a half minutes, which is the longest Vespula I've ever seen, uh, we have finally finished that room and we're moving on to the tightrope, which again, this is going to be one of those rooms that shouldn't be too bad. It's really just going to be me chugging a lot of brews because these guys hit really fucking hard. I end up running out of brews here on, on these guys. And so I think I eventually decide that I'm just going to kind of hit them and run back and keep hitting them so that I don't really take too much damage. But first, let's kill this major and then, yeah, I'm just going to walk back here and try to avoid damage as much as possible, because I know I still have a ton of brews left, but I do want to save a lot of them for Vasa and Mutadile. But we'll, we'll finish this major out and then we'll just cheese out the rangers because they just hit too damn hard. All right, now that the majors are dead, I'm just going to run in and hit these rangers and then back off afterwards to get out of range. And then I can go back in and get another hit and they won't hit me at all. So essentially just flinching them on long range like this. Uh, gonna take quite a while for them to die, but whatever, at least it's safe. And we got a nice six minute tightrope room, which is again, insanely long, but we're still doing pretty good on supplies and haven't died yet. So I'm pretty happy. And now we're moving on to the guardians. Now this room is gonna be pretty standard, not really much different here than normal. Um, just gonna run back and forth and flick piety when I'm not attacking to save some prayer. Now we're running back upstairs to resupply before the Vasa fight. So Vasa is going to be the hardest fight here. And I do have a secret weapon for Vasa, and that is switching to the Lunar Spellbook. So the reason I want to use Lunars is there's this wonderful spell called Vengeance that I can use. And what it does is it rebounds damage back at any enemy that attacks you. And so at the start of the Vasa fight, he will essentially take whatever HP you have and bring you down near zero. So I'm coming in with 118 HP and I use my vengeance. And so as he's hits me here, you can see that he's going to take rebound damage of 84, which is pretty nice. A little scary because my health gets so low, but you know, having him take 84 damage right off the bat is pretty useful. And then here I can use my Seracnus Cuddle Cudgel on stab and as well as my Dragon Dagger and spec down these crystals because remember whenever he's at these crystals he's healing up and so i need to kill them as quickly as possible or i'm not going to be able to kill vasa because he'll just out heal all my damage because honestly the rune crossbow kind of sucks against him so we're just gonna you know keep attacking him with the rune crossbow hope we can get some decent hits 
and know that you know in our back pocket we do have vengeance for every time that he teleports us so just switching back to the cudgel and there, there's a 42 see this cudgel is huge like i'm so glad that i got this it's huge for getting budget kill counts but um we're gonna be fine we're just gonna hang out here at this crystal and just hopefully kill it and we got another vengeance here going off on vasa and there's another 80 damage right there so another huge hit hopefully one or two more of those and he will be dead Unfortunately, he healed up a lot before this next Vengeance hit, but that's going to at least be another 72 damage on him. Um, that was actually kind of bad between those teleports. I think he might have even ended up at higher health than he was before, so we're going to have to hope that we can get some better luck than that. And after several more vengeance cycles, we finally got him low enough. He has 69 HP left, and that'll do it. So no more Vasa. Again, a very long fight. Uh, 10 minutes and 55 seconds. Of course, that includes the time coming back up to resupply. But um, that was definitely the hardest part of the raid. And now I think we should be good to go as long as we can not end up dying at the Muted Isles and Ulm. I don't want to get ahead of myself, though, because... Some of these guys can slap really fucking hard, but um, I'm actually going to run back and resupply before taking on the rest of the rooms. Alright, and these mystics shouldn't be too bad. I'm going to run in the corner here to hopefully safe spot this guy. He'll um, actually, you know, if I drag him over here, then he'll just kind of stand here and try to melee me and I can just range him down. So that's what we have going on here. And this is going to be helpful, save me up some brews compared to if I just fought him normally. But these guys are going to take a while to die just because, you know, my DPS is total garbage. And there's the first Mystic down. And we're just playing Brew Chugging Simulator on these guys. And second one down. And there's the third. So again, now we're going to run all the way back to resupply because muted isles fucking slap, especially before the update when they were nerfed a little bit. All right, and after a really long trek, we are finally back at the muted isle room. So we're going in here and going to try to chop the tree down as quickly as possible. You can see I've brought in, you know, somewhere in the ballpark of 15 brews, so I should be okay. But who knows, you know, my gear is pretty terrible and these guys can hit pretty fucking hard. Luckily the tree died pretty quickly, so that wasn't too bad at all. And I'm just gonna run away here and range this little muted dial as much as I can. I probably should have just been maging him, but um, range works fine. I ended up using a few more brews there than I would have liked, but it's all good. And then for the big muted dial here, it's the name of the game is just going to be Tick Eating. So I'm just going to camp here and eat, drink brews whenever I can. And this actually killed him faster than I was expecting. Maybe the room crossbow isn't all that bad. Still had plenty of brews left over. And now we're just going to change up our inventory and gear up for home. So Ulm, I'm going to try to do with taking as little damage as possible, just because, you know, things can get out of hand very quickly, and I don't want that to happen. So we're going to be using a bunch of Staminas. I've brought in a bunch of Restore Potions, too, to make sure I have enough Prayer for the whole time. And this is going to be our inventory setup going in. So we have three full Staminas plus one other dose, and we're bringing in three Brews and five Restores. So hopefully that'll do it, but we'll just have to see. This is going to be a very long fight. So each phase, the mage hand I'm going to do normally, just with the normal running pattern that you would with the toxic trident. Uh, however, I'm going to be trying to walk as much as possible to try to save run energy, because remember, I do have a limited stamina dosage, and I have to kill him before my stamina's run out, or I will die. So we're just going to hope for the best. The thrall is going to help out here a lot, because my DPS is total garbage. 
And so this Thrall is going to come in clutch and do a lot of damage. And there is the Mage Hand down. So then on the melee hand, for the most part, I'm going to be running a 1-0 pattern. And that's just where I run to the left and right and only hit it one time each cycle. So I'm getting a lot less attacks in than I could, but I'm taking zero damage. The problem with this is it ends up using up a lot of staminas. So as you can see, I'm essentially running the entire time. So we're just going to be chugging staminas as we do this. Hope that our thrall helps out a ton and just hope that we get some good hits. After about six and a half minutes, that's the first phase down for Ulm, and now we're just going to dodge some crystals and go into the second phase. I am a little worried about my stamina's running out, but we'll see how it goes. Here I'm getting a little nervous about my stamina's running out, so I decide to do a little bit of um, actually attacking and getting into the 4-1 cycle. But we'll see. You know, this is a little scary because I only have two and a half brews left and pretty shit gear. And of course I get acid walked. But yeah, th this is going to be cutting it close. We're just going to hope for the best. All right, and after a seven minute phase two, we are done with that. We have a little over a brew left and six stamina doses. So uh, six doses should be enough, but we'll see how it goes. I need to make sure to not get hit too much because my brews are pretty low and I'm going to want to save a little bit for the head phase. Right now I'm just letting my thrall attack the mage hand a bit more because I'm trying to get it as low as possible before switching over to the melee hand. You know, my DPS is total garbage and I'm going to have to kill both hands within a few seconds of each other so that they don't reset. So. I'm pretty happy that I got that one down to like 5 HP or so. Hopefully the Thrall will be enough to kill that one off before uh, the, mage, the melee hand respawns after I kill it. So yeah, we're just going to keep running this 1-0 pattern and flicking our piety and hopefully soon we'll have this phase done with. And we got a nice hit on the mage hand, and that is phase three done with in a good six minutes and eight seconds. So now I'm going to run back and forth using eagle eye instead of rigor, of course. And just going to try to, you know, make this one brew last for the whole head phase. Doing a rune crossbow head phase is probably going to be a bit rough. I'm, I'm going to mostly run back and forth and not take any damage. But of course, I'm going to mess up some as these crystals fall on me. But we should be good to go. I still have two stamina doses left and I, you know, have ruby bolts. So hopefully that'll speed this up a little bit, but uh, definitely cutting it a little bit close. Rubies are just popping off here. So hopefully I'll finish this kill soon. I have gotten trapped by the crystals a couple times and taken a few hits. So Getting a little sketchy, only have one Brudos left, but Ulm's down to 130 health, so surely I can do this. And there goes my last stamina dose, so hopefully I can get a hit soon. And that'll do it. 
at uh let's see a 23 minute ohm i completed and this was actually kill count 1001 if you see right there i did it to celebrate my thousandth solo cm and of course never lucky no purple but that is it and this is my final gear that i did my solo deathless cm on and so including all my gear um and the charges on everything that we used it comes out to a little under 900 kgp i ended up using 180 trident charges 95 ruby bolts and then some runes as you can see here and then i used five four dose stams two four dose prayer pots and a two dose super combat as well as a super anti-poison so those supplies come out to at the time 177k gp and then all the gear that i'm wearing comes out to a total of 693 gp so that is it a solo deathless cm in under 1 million gp and so now if you're an iron man that wants to do cms i've shown that clearly you can't use the excuse that your gear is too bad it is very doable with no matter what your gear is though you know i, I wouldn't recommend grinding for purple drops with this shit gear but uh, that's it. Uh, this was pretty fun to do. I might do some other budget boss kills in the future. If, if you think that'd be good content, let me know. But um, yeah, that, that was it. And I, I hope to do some cocks at some point with the new changes and test it out. But we'll probably put that off for a while. That Tebow grind kind of made me want to take a break from cocks. So um, anyway, you know, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And I will catch you guys later.